Japheth Omojua, founder Omojua.com, a leading Nigerian blogger, social media expert, and political commentator. Japheth Omojua has spoken on economic platforms in Washington, London, Addis Ababa, Lagos, Accra, Cape Town, Abuja, Rio de Janeiro, Berlin, New York, Cologne, Dakar, amongst other cities around the world and across Nigeria. He has spoken in universities such as New York University, New York, United States, Hertie School of Governance, Berlin, Germany, Catholic University of East Africa, Nairobi, Technical University, Dortmund, and several in Nigeria. He is the creator of Niger Teens, a platform of engagement and value orientation for Nigerian teenagers and founder of Omojua.com, a website which has since become a tool of expression for many Nigerians. His articles have appeared on several online and print mediums, including The Punch, Metropole Magazine, Sahara Reporters, BBC, The Financial Times, and This Day. Omojua's articles have been repeatedly translated into several languages including French, German, Portuguese, and Greek. In 2014, he was invited by the African Union to be part of Africa Reimagination Creative Hub, ARC, to fashion an agenda for Africa 2063 project. He participated as a panelist at a side event during the 2013 United Nations General Assembly in New York, where he spoke on the need to use data and facts as tools in activism and policy making. He was a delegate at the 2012 UN Conference on Sustainable Development Rio Plus 20 in Brazil. He attended the Open Forum Conference at Cape Town's International Convention Center on the invitation of the Open Society in South Africa and has led panels organized by the World Economic Forum, Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development, the African Development Bank, the Germany Federal Ministry for Economic Cooperation and Development, BMZ, Heinrich Buell Stiftung, the African German Foundation, the Association of African Ambassadors in Germany, West African Civil Society Institute, one campaign amongst other local and international organizations. Oh my God, I couldn't 
believe it. So I had to sit down and I started thinking of where I was coming from. They told me the title of my whatever is my story, right? So if I'm talking about myself, because that's the title of my story, I could have chosen to speak about any other person because I also read about other successful people. Okay, I'm going to be successful, I'm not successful yet. After that, I went to Germany. I went to Germany to be to lecture at the Free University. And let me give you examples. I think the other speakers and a lot of us go to church, probably go to mosque too. You, you hear about the principles of success and the least those things to you. Those things are true, right? But as a person growing up, my biggest inspiration was the story of other people. Even till today, other people's stories move me. When a person tells into our story, I just get moved. Even till today, I am still able to get moved by anybody's story. As long as that story can move from, this thing did not exist, it existed. This value did not exist. That it started existing. I did not know this. I knew this, and I did this, and it became this. I went to speak in Germany in 2013, February 2013. I was speaking about Africa and how young people in Africa are beginning to take their destiny into their hands and how they are beginning to have a voice. According to them, they said I represented that new African voice, that African voice that could speak and people could listen. So they wanted me to say exactly what was happening. Am I too fast? No. Okay, don't change your and don't change stuff. They wanted me to say, basically, I said, I'm saying it the way I'm feeling it. They wanted me to say exactly what was going on with the young people on the continent, activism, new media, and internet. And I had this thing, they gave me 90 minutes. I spoke for 90 minutes, and then they came and said, um, This one, what you Can you? In order of our students, saw that there was a lot you had to say. I spoke for 90 minutes. A lot of our, and then we had questions and answers. And they were like, a lot of our students said they felt that there was a lot in your conversation if you could develop it into a course. Hello? That if you could develop into a course so that you could come lecture on these issues, you could expand it so that you could come lecture at the university on these issues. So I was like, look, my, my schedule is pretty tight. Uh, I need to go back to Nigeria, look at my schedule, I'll get back to you. Now, when I was saying that, I was praying that these people should not be saying change their mind. <laughs> Because when they were telling me, I still could not believe it. It was like, what are these guys saying? Well, I'm a sharp guy. I couldn't let them know that it was too big for me. Because it really was too big for me. It was massive. But I was like, I need to get home. Like, so you don't never undersell yourself, basically. But like, I need to get home. Like, I have quite a business here. If I, if I can fit it into my schedule, why not? So I got to Nigeria. I got to Nigeria. I didn't intentionally, I didn't email them. I wanted them to be the ones to say, have you been thinking? Because if you email their families, it's shocking you. <laughs> so they email like, I mean, some of you have been waiting to get, you know, care from you, and you are available. I couldn't risk it. I didn't want them to think, oh, okay, don't worry, we'll find somebody else. So I was like, yeah, I am available. So, to cut a long story short, I, I resumed the same year in August. I taught from August. I didn't stop marketing. I finished teaching in February 2014. That was last year. I did not stop packing papers until last month. After I, even after I come back from Nigeria, people were still sending their papers. I had students from all over the place: Colombia, Morocco, Thailand, Turkey, Lithuania, USA. It was unbelievable. Even doing it at that time, I still couldn't like. Is this for real, though? And where did this start from? Mona Lisa said that she always wanted to have a magazine. I always wanted to have a magazine too. So at the university, I had a magazine. I did it for JCI. I moved on. That dream was achieved. But I always wanted to have a magazine. So I started on Modra.com when I was at the university. Modra.com. In 2009. So I remember tangibly, I was in Adopta to speak. I had three speaking engagements in Adopta recently. So each time, I was moving around, I was seeing the pictures of those days. I remember Tanji Bill, they used to call this particular server at the Dambo, they took a picture of it to come out. And I would have 100 bucks, 100 naira, I would separate 40 naira for transportation, it was 20 naira to go there from my house, and then 20 naira back. Some of the massive things I spoke at the United Nations, some of the things I thought were massive, like massive. Now, I'm not saying those things are not massive, because we are speaking 
relativity here now. I read that magazine. I'm like, was it this was why these guys put me on the cover? For real? He has 20,000 followers on Twitter. I'll give you another one. Just a year before that magazine was, I was on the cover of that magazine, one of my friends was doing a PhD in, in um, let me not mention the school so that people will not narrow it down, in England. She was doing PhD in new media and all that stuff, Nigeria. And she was, she was interviewing me at all, and she was like, hey, you've got 5,000 followers on Twitter. How do you manage it? followers and I told her that I said well look but 5,000 followers is not massive I said it's massive related to Nigeria I said when you put it beside global reality it's nothing so you've got to benchmark whatever you do against global standards that's why I cannot think I'm successful how can I be thinking I'm successful when I meet uh, what's his name Max Zuckerberg he asked for 21 billion dollars no I'm not chasing money yeah, but he asked for 21 billion dollars Hello? He's 31. He has 42.6 billion dollars to be, to be specific. So that like, I can move the 0.6, I know that it's 600 million dollars. And one that is 250 million naira. You cannot even like factor. See, whether it's in your church or in your mosque or in your school, whether it's in whether it's in the fact that you finally you were finally able to travel abroad, or you're finally able to win this particular prize you win, or you, you always wanted to win, I break it down to you. If you don't have the capacity to dream again, you are going to be smelling. The reason why stagnant water smells is because it doesn't dream again, it's not flowing. You've got to keep flowing. Even if you think you're not successful, successful today, you've got to keep doing something. You've got to keep doing what you know to do best. There was something I had no doubt about. I had no doubt that I could write. And I Right, I have no doubt about it, but I can, I can write. I'm a very good writer. I don't think I'm a good speaker, but I'm a very, very good writer. Very, very good writer. I write very, very well. If you have 20,000 naira right now and tell me to write something good for you, I will write it for you. You would love it. Hello? And you know that money is one of the things why you want to be. It was not the case before. When I started blogging, no blogger had anything. Now, look, you might be thinking only in that I know other bloggers that are riding big, going to Mauritius, going to South Africa. Bloggers that you might not even know. And guess what? Five years ago, I told a blogger, I said, by the time we were done, people would wake up in the morning, go to school, and they would ask them, what do you want to be? They would say, I want to become a blogger. If you want to be like me, then you want to become a blogger. If my story inspires you, then you want to become a blogger, whether or not you accept it. Are we doing it well? It's a different thing entirely. It's, it's, it's a growing space, it's an equal thing. It's growing into a real profession. But guess what? I realized that to be a blogger was not enough. See, to be anything is not enough. If that thing cannot inspire other people, it's a waste of time. Before you speak, that thing should inspire people. Your story, your life should inspire. When people hear your story and they are not inspired, they are feeling God. Before you preach with your mouth, let your life be the sermon. The people that I respect the most, they don't have to tell me the humble. I respect them because their humility humbles me. Hello? It's not by making noise. The richest people in the world are not the people that take pictures with money. They don't take pictures with money. How will they take pictures with How will, how will you? My daughter take pictures with 42, 42 billion dollars. Where, where would you fit the money? When you're thinking I want to be rich and start thinking of your pay packets, you will never be, you will have a job to pay your house rent, you know, do some, buy a car. But real wealth has nothing to do with money. It has anything to do with what value can you create. And as long as you can create value over and again, duplicate that value. Amplify that value, you will always, always succeed.